Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be overclocking the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 8 core CPU to 4775 megahertz using custom loop water cooling. The 5800X is the only Ryzen 7 part in AMD's launch of the brand new Ryzen 5000 series. The 5000 series are the new Zen 3 microarchitecture codenamed Vermeer. The Vermeer microarchitecture is similar to the previous generations and is also powered by a 7 nanometer process node. The main benefits can be found in the significantly increased performance per clock and increased frequencies at a similar power level. The CPU is still chiplet based and features the same I.O. die as the previous generations. The Ryzen 7 5800X offers 8 cores and 16 threads with a listed base frequency of 3.8 GHz and a boost frequency up to 4.7 GHz. It is rated at 105 watts TDP and should retail at an MSRP of 449 US dollars. The CPU should be available from November 5th. In this video, we'll cover the basic steps required to get your CPU all the way to 4775 MHz. We'll dig into four overclocking strategies. First, we'll simply enable Precision Boost Overdrive. Second, we'll push our CPU to the maximum Prime95 with AVX enabled stable settings. Third, we'll further push the CPU to its all-core maximum frequency. Lastly, we'll also do some DOS overclocking. Before we get started, let's have a look at the hardware we will use in this guide and some of the overclocking constraints we will be facing. Along with the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X processor, in this guide, we will be using the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard, an ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti graphics card, a pair of G-Scale Trident Z Royal DDR4 3200 memory sticks, and of course, EK water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be around $3,150. That's $450 for the CPU, $600 worth of cooling, $430 for the motherboard, $200 for the bench table, $160 for the memory, and $1,300 for the graphics card. Before we get started, let's have a look at the AMD CPU technology and the overclocking constraints we will be facing. A Ryzen 5000 CPU consists of a couple of parts. Each CPU has multiple chiplets. A chiplet is a die with specific functions such as CPU core, I.O. hub, memory controller, and so on. All the chiplets communicate with each other via the fabric interconnect. A core chiplet die, or CCD, is one of the chips on the AMD CPU. While a CCD used to consist of two CCXs paired together, on Zen 3, a CCD consists of a single CCX. CCX is short for core complex. The core complex consists of eight individual cores, each with their L1 and L2 cache. They also share a large 32 megabyte L3 cache. The Ryzen 7 5800X has one CCD with one CCX, and that one CCX has eight out of the eight cores enabled. By default, the fabric, memory controller, and memory frequency operate in synchronous mode. That means typically the CPU will run all frequencies in one-to-one -one ratio. In asynchronous mode, the memory controller will operate at half the frequency of the system memory. The fabric clock will also run below system memory frequency. So you'll face a performance penalty. This penalty can be overcome by increasing the memory frequency to well over DDR4 4000 speeds. With all this in mind, let's jump into the benchmarks and the overclocking. Here's a list of the benchmarks used in this guide. Super Pi 4M, Geekbench 5, HWL X265, Cinebench R20, ROG Realbench version 2.56, and Final Fantasy 14. Before we start pushing the Ryzen 7 5800X, let's first have a look at the performance at stock settings. Super Pi 4M, 35.47 seconds. Geekbench 5 single threaded, 1,544 points. Geekbench 5 multi-threaded, 9,930 points. HWBOT X265 4K, 18.042 frames per second. Cinebench R20, 5,793 marks. ROG Realbench, 214,462 points. 
Final Fantasy XIV, 172.34 frames per second. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, our first step is to simply enable AMD's most aggressive performance configuration through Precision Boost Overdrive. Precision Boost Overdrive aims to maximize performance in case your system is equipped with extra cooling capacity and adequate system components. The performance is determined by a variety of factors such as CPU temperature, type of workload, number of active cores, power consumption, current draw, and so on. When the processor has additional headroom, Precision Boost Overdrive will automatically raise the frequencies. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Scroll down to the Precision Boost Overdrive submenu and enable Precision Boost Overdrive. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. During the boost, we can regularly see the single threaded frequency go all the way up to 4.7 GHz and the multi-threaded frequency boost to 4.4 GHz. Now let's start with the fun stuff and do some manual overclocking. In addition to increasing the CPU frequency to 4.6 GHz, we can also increase the fabric and memory clock frequency to 1.8 GHz, as well as increase the memory speed to DDR4-3600 and set some manual timings. This is also our maximum Prime 95 with AVX enabled, stable configuration. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Set memory frequency to DDR4-3600. Set fabric clock frequency to 1800 MHz. Set CPU core ratio to 46x. Set CPU core voltage to manual. Enter the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM timing control submenu. Set CPU core voltage override to 1.375 volts. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volts, then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. We can notice a couple of things. First, just like with the previous generation of Ryzen CPUs, we lose performance against default settings in single threaded light workloads. The reason is that by default, the frequency would boost to 4.8 GHz, whereas with this manual overclock, we are limited to 4.6 GHz. Second, we can see a positive impact of the additional performance from overclocking the fabric and memory. This definitely helps overcome some of the performance deficit we see from the lower than default boost CPU frequency. Third, in multi-thread applications, we see the performance increase of the additional CPU frequency amplified with a raised fabric and memory clock. Running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX at 4.6 GHz, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 91C and a peak CPU package power of 161 Watt. Let's keep pushing. If we ignore Prime 95 with AVX enabled as a relevant stability benchmark, we can further increase the CPU frequency to 4775 MHz while maintaining the same fabric, memory controller and memory frequency overclock. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Set Memory Frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F-Clock Frequency to 1800 MHz. Set CPU Core Ratio to 47.75x. Enter the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set DRAM Timings to 16 16 16 16 36. Leave the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set CPU core voltage to manual. Set CPU core voltage override to 1.425 volts. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volts, then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. As expected, the performance continues to rise. DOS OC is short for Dynamic OC Switching and is, in my opinion, a very clever way of working around one of AMD's main challenges when it comes to overclocking. To frame this challenge correctly, let's have a look back at one of our previous videos where we overclocked the AMD Matisse XT processor. When going through the numbers and discussing them with some of my industry friends, I realized that rather than having several overclocking strategies, AMD users have a set of overclocking trade-offs. But not in a bad way. 
Frankly, the out-of-box frequencies and resulting performance are excellent. The AMD engineers who were tasked with getting users the best possible performance at default settings did an amazing job. In fact, they did such a good job that manual overclocking can give you worse performance in certain scenarios, specifically single-threaded light workloads. When manually overclocking, you lose the benefits of automatic boost frequency. Also, you can't configure the boost frequencies by specific use case, for example, by core usage or per core. This is the first overclocking trade-off. Settle for lower single-threaded performance with higher all-core performance or the other way around. Another overclocking trade-off is that there's no way to configure the system for truly worst case scenarios, such as Prime95 small FFT with AVX. On other platforms, you can use an AVX offset ratio to temporarily reduce the performance if such workloads come your way. But on AMD, you can't. That means you have to decide whether you're willing to trade in a potentially less stable system for additional performance in certain situations. Dynamic OC switching allows us to, well, dynamically switch between OC mode and PBO. The real world implication is that you can now benefit from the very aggressive frequencies offered through PBO, as well as the effort that you put into manual overclocking. Dynamic OC requires very little additional configuration work. We'll show you how to do it using our Prime95 with AVX enabled settings, as well as our all core maximum overclock settings. For Prime95, upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the extreme tweaker menu. Set AI overclock tuner to manual. Set memory frequency to DDR4 3600. Set F clock frequency to 1800 MHz. Enter the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Set core VID to 1.375. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 46. Enable dynamic OC switcher. Set current threshold to switch to OC mode to 90 amps. Leave the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Enter the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enable precision boost overdrive. Then leave the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enter the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volt. Then save and exit the BIOS. For manual OC, upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the extreme tweaker menu. Set AI overclock tuner to manual. Set memory frequency to DDR4 3600. Set F clock frequency to 1800 MHz. Enter the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Set core VID to 1.425. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 47.75. Enable dynamic OC switcher. Set current threshold to switch to OC mode to 50 amps. Leave the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Enter the precision boost overdrive submenu and enable precision boost overdrive. Then leave the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enter the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM timing control submenu. Then set the DRAM voltage to 1.4 volt and save and exit the BIOS. Before we get to the performance comparison, I wanna have a quick word on the current threshold value. The key thing to keep in mind is that DOS OC will switch between OC mode and precision boost overdrive, so you can benefit from the aggressive single thread frequency and performance offered by PBO. The current threshold is one of the ways to determine the exact point at which the modes are switched. Anything above the current threshold will force OC mode. Anything below the current threshold will force PBO mode. The exact trigger point will depend on your CPU, your motherboard, your cooling, and your system. One way of identifying the right trigger point is to check the CPU current during a benchmark workload. I'll give you an example. First, make sure the system is set to default settings with precision boost overdrive enabled. Then go into the operating system and use hardware info and Prime95 without AVX. Gradually increase the amount of Prime95 threads until you see the operating frequency drop below your desired manual overclock. When this happens, check the CPU current in hardware info. This is the value you can use to configure DOS OC.
As a rule of thumb, you should expect a high manual overclock to have a low current threshold and vice versa. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation at both our maximum Prime 95 stable and our maximum all core manual overclocks. Comparing the performance gains with and without DOS OC, we can see that with DOS OC enabled, we're able to squeeze out a little bit more performance. All right, let's wrap this up. I must say I was quite pleased with both the performance offered and the additional overclocking headroom of the Ryzen 7 5800X CPU. I think those two elements combined make this quite an enjoyable product for enthusiasts. On the overclocking side, not much has changed. The same challenges that existed on Zen 2 are still present on Zen 3. That is, if you're tuning for an absolute worst case scenario such as Prime 95 with AVX enabled, then you'll lose a lot of single threaded performance. I would say that the biggest thumbs up for me goes to the ACES engineers for implementing DOS OC. Because DOS OC allows you to benefit both from the PBO frequencies as well as from the effort that you put into manual overclocking. All right. That's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, you know what to do and till the next time.